Okay, so I thought I would just do a little video here um, showing real life, uh, even in my own family, my own pack of dogs, how I uh, introduce, too close to my face, you don't want to see my face, um, how I introduce the remote collar. There's many ways. The principles of introducing the remote collar should, the foundation principles should always be the same. Um, but the way that you go about that might be slightly different. So I'm going to show you as an example. If I close the door here. Show you close. Uh, excuse me. Show you as an example um, how I introduce. So little Lilo here. Little Lilo is already remote collar trained. Okay, she's the one that's deaf. Um, so wherever I've just put the handset. So I'm using a mini educator here. Okay. Um, and it's set up as a two dog system. I'm going to do another video actually about um, uh, how to set up from a one to a two dog system, things like that, all the different things you can do with the Mini Educator, how to reprogram it and change it. I'll do that as a separate video. But um, Stitch, little Stitchy, has um, never had remote collar on. Okay, and Stitch is four. And he's a great wee dog, um, and he knows recall, he knows all the, the obedience commands, he knows the commands uh, that, that I would um, want to layer the e-collar with. He already knows those commands. But I've just noticed the last few while, he, he, he could be a bit smarter, as in smart and a bit tidier, he could uh, tidy it up a wee bit. And I don't know about you, but, um, you know, it's kind of a little bit of... You know, you might be the joiner out helping other people's homes, but you, your house still needs stuff done. And that, you know, let's just be real life. So, so like Junior and Rex, for example, Junior up, up, go on, you can do it, go on. Takes him a few wee jumps, go on, up, go on, up you go, you can do it, go, 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 go. Oh, yeah, you're just getting in the way. Go on, Junior. Yeah, good job, and Rex. So these two, for example, are like bomb proof. These two are literally perfect. Um, know all their commands. They're both remote collar trained. Obviously their backgrounds, um, I had to, you know, I was much, much stricter with them to be honest. But, uh, and Lilo, because she's she's deaf, I've, I had to be really strict with her as well in terms of her really understanding remote collar, etc. Um, and Or just guaranteeing that I know she would listen to me, um, but, uh, and that had to be through the remote collar because she was deaf. So I could be anywhere right now, so I've got the remote collar on. She's on a four. I'm just going to try and film so you can see. When I say tap, I'm pressing the button, okay? So she's black. So I'm going to wait till she's not looking at me. Maybe throw this toy. Okay, let's throw the toy. Ready? Go, go, go! Okay. Tap, tap. Yeah! Good job. Ready? Go! Go get it, go get it, go get it, get it to me, ready. So whenever I'm saying tap, that's me pressing Lilo, okay? Not pressing it there, she's just being a good girl. Woo, okay, tap, 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 yay, good job. Okay, so, and Lilo's on a four. Um, well, I mean, it doesn't, numbers don't really matter to be honest, it's how the dog reacts and their perception level, but it's very, very low. Um, and she's very happy. I'll tap now. Watch. Tap, tap. Yeah! Good girl! So Lilo, tap, tap. Woo! She completely understands remote collar if, uh, in this way of what I, in, in terms of what I want her to learn, which is stop what you're doing, pay attention to me, come to me in any scenario. Um, very rarely have I had to use the remote collar in terms of punishment for, for Lilo. I'm gonna, I'll do it now, like. Tap. Yeah! <laughs> Okay, it's just the same right now, effectively, as, as a whistle or a verbal shout. It's an attention grabber. It's just with the whistle and the verbal shout, the, I can't do them with her because she's deaf. But not just that, she, um, they also have shelf lives. So it doesn't matter, you could teach your dog the whistle a billion gazillion times and, and the verbal shout a million gazillion times. But ultimately, it's still always is asking. If the dog really chooses to go, yeah, I know that whistle or that shout refers to getting affection and coming in and getting high fives and 
petted or whatever there's still ultimately things in life where the dog goes yeah i would rather not because i'm going to go and do this instead and that's where the remote collar comes into its own where it can switch from where i'm not, i'm now not asking you but i'm telling you um so but stitch has never had remote collar so he's had the remote collar on a few times just getting comfortable with it it's going to be bungee and what i'm going to do is i'm going to attempt because i'll put the phone down you maybe can't hear me but hopefully you'll be able to see it through what I'm doing, I'm going to attempt to uh, start introducing the remote collar. Now, because he's my dog already, and we have a really good relationship, we're in my gar we're in we're in the garden right now, an enclosed area. When I'm first introducing the the, the tapping on his neck, which is totally unfamiliar to him, um, I ha normally you would have a long line attached, especially if I was using a client's dog. Um, but sometimes, if you've got enough control over the environment and a really good relationship with the dog you don't need to um, and i'm going to use and what i generally always use is food um, as a as a reinforcer okay so what i'm going to do here is negative reinforcement to positive reinforcement so what does that mean that simply means i'm going to apply a little bit of pressure to the dog which is the physical tap i'm going to find his lowest level he's never had it on i don't know what his level will be but you're going to look for the signs, okay? I'm going to find his lowest level that he feels. And then as soon as he feels it, I'm going to release the pressure. In other words, let go of the button. And then I'm going to high five him. I'm going to give him food, okay? So I've got a wee pouch here of just some nibbles that uh, that, that he'll definitely like. Yeah, you want, you guys want what? Do you want a wee nibble? There you go. You can have a nibble. You want a nibble? Uh, you'll have a nibble, of course you will. So, we're really using the, the, the remote collar effectively just to, to build up an association, a language, similar to like using a clicker. Um, that is all reinforcement based. There is no punishment involved, it's all reinforcement based. Okay, so people that will talk about remote collars and say that they are cruel, aversive, there's no space for them in today's society, etc. That is, anyone who's saying that has come from a completely ignorant point of view. And I hope it's ignorance or else they have an alternate agenda. Because the remote collar is the single best inanimate training tool to have on a dog in the world. Absolutely, by far. Um, so the ultimate best training tools are you and your energy, your body language, the relationship the dog has with you. Um, you know, everything can, is a tool. But an inanimate object that, that you know... It, um, isn't a living, breathing uh, animal um, or thing, the, the, I would definitely say the remote collar is the, the best tool to to be able to guarantee safety and, and, and uh, safety I guess would be the most important thing but also it can really build up dog's confidence But I've, so back to what I was saying earlier about Stitch, Stitch is just he's a total lovely wee character Stitch in, in his life really doesn't really need, even need a leash, etc. Um, but I would just like to smarten up his recall a wee bit to where I maybe had to went Stitch, Stitch, and maybe had to that and that's it. And, and then he comes and I'm like, no, I, I don't want that. I want it more bulletproof, more bomb proof. And uh, even if I just use the, the collar to reinforce, I teach the collar first and then associate it with stuff he already knows what that does is it's i can then re remove when i'm going through what we call an intermittent phase i can kind of filter it in and out and it smartens up just the verbal command so i'm gonna put the phone down somewhere uh, to try and get a good so you can see so where could i put the phone i'm gonna try and sit it here let me just test i'm just not gonna sit there maybe sit here Okay, good. So I'm going to do it in this area, okay, behind me. I'll move this stuff out of the way. You can tell I have five kids, right? So I've got remote collar and I've got my pouch of food. So the way that this works, and this is the way that you would teach your dog as well, I would always advise doing this as a session with a trainer who knows what they're doing. Not just a trainer, but a trainer who knows remote collars, because you could do it with a trainer who would tell you not to use one. If they did, then don't go near that trainer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
apply the pressure of the e-collar first and find the lowest level that he feels, the dog feels. And how will I know? Because he'll maybe look around or he'll itch or his ear might just twitch or he might just do this. Something very low but almost feels like a fly touching him. And even though it's not painful or uncomfortable in any way, it's still brand new and he doesn't know where it's coming from. So I am then going to um, release the pressure, make it go away. Just, just initially, just him feeling it. I'm just going to go, boom, I'm going to give you a fiver for that. Okay? Um, and when, he, when I release it, I'm going to shout on him and I'm going to give him some food. Okay? And just watch how that builds up. Okay? Stitch, when he gets something new, his stitch is really wimpy. Um, so when he gets something new, I tapped him and then called him to him. Right now, just so you know, we're on a five on the remote collar. When I tap him and he felt something new, he just stopped and went, something touched me. So to help him out even initially, I tap and then I just go to him and just go, here, boom, take that food. Until a number of repetitions, I can start working on him coming to me, okay? So watch. Coming good. Watch the watch the difference in little Lilo. Can you see? Watch the difference in the white one who knows her stuff. I'm gonna tap now. Tap tap. <laughs> she knows the drill. She knows the drill. There, stitch feels it there. Boom. Yeah, good job, buddy. Good job. So already like fourth, fifth attempt. I tapped him and he's turning and looking at me. Okay, because he's just thinking, I feel that tap, I get food. I'm not asking him to do anything yet. I just want to make a good association with when I tap it, he fe he goes, oh, that's the dinner bell. Okay? So I don't know, you can't really see him there. I'm moving further back. I'm holding the button on continuous right now. Yeah, good job. Good job, dude. So all I'm wanting him to do is I'm, I'm tapping him and all I want him to do is to turn and look at me, okay? And then he gets food. There, turn his head. Yeah, good job, buddy. Whereas look at the difference in Lilo. I'll move her away. Tap tap. <laughs> she, she's a she's the star. She knows what she's doing. And this is really how it goes initially. I mean, you might not be able to see much, but I'm applying pressure, the lowest level the dog feels. When I see him just respond, I'm letting it go. And when I'm really strict, I'll do name command marks. I will be stitch, come. Yes, good boy, and giving him affection, okay? Initially, I'm, I'm just trying to make that ding-dong food, ding-dong food, ding-dong food. But it's a tap-tap food, tap-tap food. So I'll do it here. I'm going to tap him now. Finding that level. He feels it right now. He doesn't know what to do. I don't know if you can see him. So I'm tapping him there. So he feels it, but he doesn't really know what to do. But I don't need to turn it up anymore. Now, how do I know he feels it? I can just tell by his whole demeanour. I don't need to be looking for a dog that is jumping and squealing and all these other things that people try and make you think that happens, which is not true. <laughs> Good job, buddy. And if, if, if I was, if I was um, being really strict, I wouldn't have Lilo there. Um, if, I, if she'd never learned remote call, I'd just be working on one dog at a time. But she brings a great energy and etc. And how she responds when she feels the call, that can have an, an impact on him as well. So that's good. There we go. Yeah. 
Good job. So just so you know, I've turned it up a wee bit higher just to show you, right? So I've turned him up to a 10. Now the dog is about a 6, but I've turned it up to a 10 just so you can see his ear flicker. What? Oh, see if you can see if you can see him, okay? So I'm holding it there. See his neck twitch? I don't know if you can see his neck twitch. His neck's twitching. He's looking. Not uncomfortable in any way, but he's like, what the heck is that touching me? Okay? <laughs> Good job, buddy. So I'll work with Stitch. I'm going to work on building speed and drive. But the most important thing is that he feels that and he is not scared and frightened and oh, things that people try and make you believe, which are just not true, okay? So my, my first port of call is that it is fair to the animal um, and, it and second, which will come, is that it makes sense to the animal, okay? But the first is it's fair, so I'm very gentle, and then a, a negative reinforcement, which means the dog is learning to remove the little tapping on his neck by, right now, just by moving, by looking at me, okay? Overall, I'll smarten it up when he starts to understand more, and it will be removed by as he, as, as he comes to me or as he listens to my command. But I'm always using e-collar first because what the dog knows least should always come first in the sequence whenever you're training an animal, okay? So here I'm going to do again to see if you can see Stitch. Tapping him there. Good job, buddy! So my thing is that, and, and it's a simple exercise, 10-15 minutes, just moving around, tapping him. And what I'm thinking, and, and over time what I'll start doing is adding that pressure, not any higher, but a wee bit longer. Until he kind of goes tap 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 tap. What do I do? How does this go away again? Did it? Oh, every time I look at Dad. Oh yeah, yeah, it goes away. Good. And Dad gives me a fiver. So we call that a double reinforcement. To where he feels better because the tapping goes away. He learned how to get rid of it, and he gets paid. Okay. So you don't. This 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 is how everything should be taught in a dog. Leash pressure or teaching him really any command. You use negative to positive reinforcement. Okay. So I'm going to do it again. Tap, tap. Yes, good job, Stitch. You know? So with her, I can do the same, but she... With Lilo, I can do the same, but she knows it better, right? So watch when I tap her. Boom. Yeah. She's just like, yeah, I'm already here, right? Pay me. Which is great, because then that's going to guarantee that I can get that recall, okay? Come on. Do another one. Good job. Now we've got more engagement. Now we've got more engagement. I'm going to tap him. Boom. Yes. Now already with Stitch as well, I could be doing this in the middle of the park. I could do this anywhere and I will do that. Um, but I just wanted to introduce, you're always working on the three Ds, right? Distance, duration and distraction. So. I just wanted to make sure, when, when I'm first teaching, I want the distance and duration and distraction to be low so that we can achieve the greatest amount of success. But um, when I first introduced the sensation, he's totally comfortable with it. Um, he still needs to learn it more, but he's comfortable with it. Um, some dogs, you don't know, they, they, they feel anything tiny or the worst, you, vibration is, is much stronger. So for example, this time I'm gonna vibrate stitch rather than stim him, okay, which is the blunt stim. And watch his reaction, okay? So he's been stimmed, but this is the vibration. I know. <laughs> Good job. So the vibration, which is seen as more positive nowadays or whatever, I don't use the shock in my shock collar. I only use vibration. People that say that don't have a clue how to use remote collars. They shouldn't be using remote collars. They're seeing it as a punishment device. Um, so the, the vibration actually... Uh, when you're doing low level uh, communication with the dog, which is most of the time, a vibration is actually stronger than is needed. That sent Stitch into more confusion than a low level stim. You know, the stim, he was just going tap, 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 cool. What do you want me to do to get rid of this? I don't know. But the vibration, he was, whoa. So, you know, you, just because we might feel a certain way, it's like a prong collar. People might think a prong, or well, by the way, a prong collar looks, oh, it's barbaric and cruel. Whereas the dog's like, I don't care about what something looks like, I care about how it feels on me. So the dog would much prefer a prong collar over a halty, um, you know. So we've got, to, if we really love dogs, we put the dogs, uh, what feels comfortable to the dog first, rather than what we might see uh, as being more comfortable. So I'm going to go back to Stim and give him another wee Stim. I'm going to do it here when he's, if you can see him. Very good. 
there. Just that wee ear twitch. Boom, gets paid for that. Good job, buddy. Yes, Lulu, you get one too. So I'll repeat that for a wee while. I'm finished there now, but I'll repeat that over the next few days and I'll build up. Stitch already, again, the, the e-collar goes on top of stuff that the dog already knows. So he already knows recall. He's already. I just want to sp smarten up a wee bit, and and the. I don't. I don't. I'm not at a stage with the dog that I rel I need to rely on the e collar or anything. But I want him to know it so that I. Um, just I find if I teach him it and use it for just a couple of weeks even, just to smarten back up that that, you know, stitch come boom turning. Um, then I can filter it on and off, and then, he, and then he knows it, and I can use it if I really have to use it in any scenarios I really can. Um, it's just another tool that I can use. So Stitch did a, a great first um, test with the in, in exercise with the remote collar. Uh, he's, he's doing really well, as you can see here. He's just like, yes, yeah. so I'm going to tap him here. I'm tapping him right now. You can see the red light. He feels the tapping on his neck. There, you see the wee twitch. There we go. Good job, Stitch. Good job, buddy. <laughs> so, um, for me, I, I will hold the remote up to maybe three to four seconds. Um, maybe five in a super low distraction, especially if I know the dog really well. But I'm holding it on continuous, ba -ba 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 um, until I see that any response. If I'm holding it for more than that and the dog hasn't responded, I'm either in too much of a distraction area, or um, um, or I'm not high enough, or um, the um, I've not got a good connection, you know. So the, the, that's the reality. So you just don't think, oh, he's not he's not listening. I have to turn it up. No, it just probably means the dog doesn't know it enough yet, or you're in too much of a distraction area, um, or you might not have a good connection. Frenchies, etc. It's dead easy to get a good connection with them, but. Mo collar man, it's totally the way forward. If, if every dog really should, uh, if they were taught remote collar, I don't mean straight from puppy, but if that was added into their toolbox, you know, the problems that we have in the world in general, in the Western world, guarantee most of them would be gone. Certainly things like sheep worrying or recall, people not be able to recall their dogs, dog attacks, all these things would be gone, absolutely gone.